Let us prepare our hearts to worship God this morning. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Blessed Sunday morning, church. It is good to gather for worship on this day that the Lord has made. We are glad to have this platform to worship the Lord and join together even whilst we are apart. We invite you to have your Bibles close by, to open your hearts to the Spirit of the Lord, and to join in praise and worship unto our Lord as we begin in prayer. Let us pray. Lord our God, we adore you. We marvel at your goodness and the grandeur of your love. We acknowledge that you are mighty, you are powerful, wonderful, and awesome. We are so privileged to be called your children. You are almighty, above and beyond everything. Father, we thank you for this opportunity in this time and in this place to worship and praise your holy name. Father, we are sorry for the times we get carried away with the business of this world, forgetting to serve you and forgetting to serve those around us. Forgive us on this day for falling short of your glory. Forgive us on this day for all our ways of rebellion. Forgive us of our sins, the words, the thoughts, the deeds, all that were not of you. Forgive us, O Lord, and create within us clean hearts and clean minds. Renew a right spirit within us and lead us in your holy way. With thankfulness in our hearts and minds, we offer this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, our scripture reading is taken from Joshua 
chapter 24, verses 14 to 15. Please read along with me from your Bibles. Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose lands you dwell today. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. At this time, the Morning Star Presbyterian Church Choir shares their message and song with the anthem, Here's My Life. At the end of his life, Joshua was challenging the children of Israel to be faithful to their God. They needed to make up their minds. They needed to decide whom they would serve. One of my favorite movies happened to be Ben-Hur, signed Charlton Heston. There's a place where Masala asks Judah Ben-Hur to give him the names of those opposed to Rome. Judah said that he could not betray his fellow men. Masala said, it's either them or me. You have to make a choice. You are either for me or against me. Judah Ben-Hur chose to go against him. Judah and his family, his mom and his sister, suffered many things because they made that decision. Often in our life, we have to make choices for one side or the other. Sometimes the consequences can be great. In the same way, Joshua places a choice before Israel in today's text. Israel's choice also had great consequences, and so would we, depending on the choices we make. Let us pray. 
Father, your word is quick and sharper than any two-edged sword. Pierce our hearts at this time so that we can receive your truth. And to this end, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts may it be acceptable to you, our Savior, our strength and Redeemer. Amen. Joshua knew he had only a little time left. So he summoned all the people to one last address, one rally, one last rally. He wanted them to choose whom they would serve. Moses led Israel to make such a commitment twice before. Firstly, at Mount Sinai and then on the plains of Moab. Since entering the land, Joshua had led them to renew the covenant at this same place. This was because each new generation must make their own choice. Joshua gave Israel a history lesson, reminding them of God's past faithfulness. Then he asked them to make a choice on this day, whom they will serve. Finally, he renews the covenant with Israel at Shechem. Joshua speaks here as God's prophet, using the pronoun I. God is speaking through him as he reviews God's past faithfulness. God says, I took, I gave, I plagued, I sent. The personal pronoun is used a lot, some 17 times by Joshua, showing God's personal involvement on Israel's behalf. Of course, the preferred and best choice was to fear the Lord and serve him sincerely and with truth in your hearts. All other gods were to be put away. If God is our preferred choice, we are called to serve him. Joshua reminded them of this in his address. Joshua reminded Israel of the purpose God had called them to. God had called Israel for a special purpose. Through Israel, all the families of earth would be blessed. But with privilege comes responsibility. Israel must serve the Lord faithfully. And Joshua issues that call, Whom shall you serve? God has been just as merciful to all of us. He called us to himself when we were dead in our sins. He saved us and gave us new life through his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. He fought for us to deliver us from Satan, defeating sin, death, hell, and the grave by his full, sufficient sacrifice made on that cross at Calvary. He has provided a rich inheritance for us in heaven. Sometimes we forget just how rich we really are, but the Lord has also called us for a purpose. We are called to serve God by making known his salvation to all those around us by sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. God has made us for himself. We will never be fulfilled or completely satisfied in life until we serve him. God called us for a purpose. Are we fulfilling this purpose? Recently, I stopped at the traffic light and noticed the bumper sticker on the car in front of me. It said, I'm in no hurry. I'm on my way to work. I wondered, is that how we feel about doing God's work? There were other gods that could be worshipped, including the gods of Egypt and the gods of the Amorites. The God of Israel was indeed superior to all these gods that weren't really gods. It is still not wise or logical to choose alternatives, especially to the true and the living God. But people do it all the time. Idols today may not be wood or metal or even stone, but idols today can be a job, a house, a position, or even a privilege. Anything that takes our focus, our worship, our praise becomes an idol. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 tells us no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Whom shall you serve? There's a story attributed to Indira Gandhi. 
My grandfather, she said, once told me that there are two kinds of people. Those who do work and those who take the credit for it. He told me to try to be in the first group. There was less competition there. As far as Joshua and those he led in his family, those in his household, this was a no-brainer. Joshua then stated that as for himself and his house, they would indeed serve the Lord. Joshua knew without doubt whom to serve. He pledged allegiance to the, Lord's, to the Lord, setting a very good example for his household. Today, are we setting good examples to our households? Are we choosing to serve God? After reminding Israel of God's faithfulness, Joshua asked them to choose whom they will serve. They all promised, we will serve the Lord. They then stated how God had saved them from bondage in Egypt and led them to Canaan. He provided for them along the way. They recalled how the Lord drove out the people of the land. They said, we also, like you, will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Today, we are called to remember what God has done for us. We are called to remember where he brought us out from. Our dark days, times of sickness, darkness, doubt, fear, anger, hate, emptiness, nothingness, when we felt like we could not go on. In the same way as Joshua encouraged Israel to make a public declaration of their loyalty to God, we are called to declare our choice. Have you committed yourself to Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Choose ye this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. God of light, we have heard your message proclaimed of all, that in you there is no dark cloud at all. Nothing exists that can hide the light of your holy presence. Forgive us when we go astray, when we cling to darkness, and we do not hear your call to wake up and do your work. Send us to do your deeds of mercy and peace, to feed the hungry, to shelter the homeless, touch the sick with your healing balm, console the sorrowing, visit the prisoners, and welcome the stranger. On this day, we give you thanks, O Lord, for your love and your mercy, your kindness and your goodness to all of us. We thank you for reaching out to us and accepting us wherever we are. We give you thanks for the opportunities like these to pray for one another, to ask for your blessings on your servants, our community, your church, our country, and indeed the entire world. Father, in our prayers, we give you thanks for this time of worship and for every viewer, for every listener, for every heart that takes heed of your presence today. We take this opportunity on this day to pray for the sick, the lonely, the lost, those who have lost loved ones, the aged, the infirm, those who are filled with doubts and fears, those who have been affected by man-made and natural disasters. Father, we pray for those who do not have the means by which to earn their daily bread and for those who are unable to nourish and be sustained. We pray for those who have been affected by crime and by violence. Father, for those affected directly and indirectly by COVID-19, we lay them in your hands today. For our leaders in church and state, our protective services, our medical personnel, may you guide and lead them and grant all of us your wisdom, patience, peace, and insight. We pray for our teachers and students, our parents and guardians, 
and indeed all of us as we embrace this new normal and work with technology as we find normalcy in the things and the times in this pandemic. Today, into your hands we commend ourselves to continue to do your work and to have faith and confidence that you will take care of us. You will never give us more than we can handle at any given time. We are mindful that while our Lord walked the earth, he healed the sick, he made the blind see, he raised the dead, he calmed the storms, and he fed the multitudes. And when they asked him, Lord, how shall we pray? He answered, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you, be gracious and generous unto you, 
May the Lord lift up his countenance unto you and grant you his peace, both this day and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.